Hi everyone, I am Fedragon and I am ready for yet another highly intellectual IT dance with you. Are you excited? Me neither. Probably there are many funnier things to do for both of us than talking and learning about virtual networking. But one thing is for sure, in 15 or so minutes you'll learn very useful things about setting up a virtual router. So, in this video we'll finally start with some more advanced and more interesting issues. So, let's start. Let's see the current state of our host. We've installed our first virtual machine. And if you remember, while creating the virtual machine, we've assigned one nick to it. But let's see, is it connected to any network? I'll right-click the virtual machine, select Edit Settings, Network Adapter node and as you can see in Network Connection section it seems that our virtual machine is connected to something called VM Network. What the fridge is VM Network? To explain this I'll go to Configuration tab. Having my host selected I'll click on Configuration tab Networking node. As you can see, there is something called standard switch vSwitch0 and virtual machine port group called VM Network. The picture we are looking at is actually virtual switch. And what is virtual switch? Virtual switch is a piece of software embedded in ESXi server which reproduces real hardware switch functionality. It's actually the same thing as hardware switch but much better. Virtual Switch has many advantages comparing to Hardware Switch and the biggest advantage is probably incomparably easier setup. It's simple as clicking Add Networking command. I'll go to Simple Wizard. And you can create as many virtual switches as you want. The switch is represented with this grey rectangle. Let's see what's connected to the switch. On the right side there is Physical Adapter section and VM NIC 0 in it. It's obviously our physical NIC, meaning that the switch is connected to some external network. So I'll call it external switch. Uh, you can guess that soon we'll have the internal switch also. On the bottom left side there is VM kernel port and VMK 0 in it. This is VM management port and we are using it already, no matter if we are accessing the host through browser, vSphere client, as in this session, or some other tool such as PuDDY, we are actually accessing through this port. I won't go into details about VM kernel here, but I want to emphasize that it is necessary for us to have this port in order to access to our ESXi host and manage it. On the top left side there is virtual machine port group and as the name implies it's port group for connecting virtual machines. Our first virtual machine called testing is already connected here. Question for you. Connected as the picture shows, does the virtual machine have the internet access? Anyone? Actually the correct answer should be I don't know. For successful internet access, few things are needed. First, we need physical connection. We must have some kind of cable or wireless link between the machine and the internet. And according to the picture, our virtual machine does have physical connection. Or I should say virtual physical connection. Anyway, the machine is connected. But beside the physical connection, the machine must have at least one more thing. IP address. Does our machine have IP address? Again, the correct answer is I don't know. It depends on what is on the right side of the physical adapter. Or in other words, it depends on which network the host machine is connected to. If the host machine is connected to our private or LAN network, we can simply assign some IP address from available scope to the virtual machine and will be online. And if there is a DHCP server on the network, we don't need to do anything. Virtual machine will get the IP address automatically. 
On the other hand, if the host is connected directly to the internet, and this is probably the case when you are renting dedicated server, you won't be able to simply choose some public IP and assign it to virtual machine, of course. So there are two options. You should either get a public IP address for each virtual machine you want to connect to the internet, or you should deploy something called virtual router. In the rest of the video, I'll show you how you can implement virtual router. Let's make a blueprint of our desired virtual network. In the simplest scenario, we have just one ESXi host and VM kernel inside it. We won't bother with VM kernel and what it is, but we must take it into account while talking about prerequisites. On the physical machine, of course, we must have a NIC. As we just saw, VM kernel and physical NIC are connected to a virtual switch called external switch. We need to have one public IP address for managing ESXi server and this IP address can't be used for virtual machines or router. So we must have at least one more public IP address for virtual machines. We've concluded that we can't connect virtual machine to the external switch because we don't have enough public addresses, but we can connect a router. Virtual routers, as physical also, are providing more services besides routing, such as firewall, DHCP server, VPN server, etc. The router will be connected to the external switch with its WAN side or WAN port. For virtual machines, we'll create one more switch called internal switch. The router will be connected to the internal switch with its LAN side or LAN port. And finally, we can connect as many virtual machines as we want to the internal switch. As you can see, in this network setup, we've accomplished full separation between LAN and WAN. All the traffic will go through the router and its firewall, so we'll have secure network. Only VM kernel is accessible directly from the internet. But I hope and believe that VMware has protected it adequately. This will be our network setup. I want to comment another possibility. Although I've told that we must have at least two public IP addresses, theoretically we can accomplish similar result with just one public IP. I've said theoretically because I've never tested such setup and I strongly recommend not to use it. We can disconnect VM kernel from the external switch and connect it to the internal switch. In this case, just one public IP will be sufficient. If we set port forwarding rules in our router so that all ESXi management ports are forwarded to VM kernel, will be able to manage ESXi through the same public IP and through the same router. But as I've already said, I haven't tested such setup and I recommend not to use it. One of the reasons for avoiding this configuration is the fact that we'll be unable to access and manage ESX host if router goes down. The only choice for us in this case would be to access the SXI server through KVM switch and console. So I'll roll back to our stable plan with two public IP addresses and the next step is to actually set up such network. As you probably know, if you don't know where to go, it will be much harder for you to get there. Since we have a clear plan, it will be much easier for us to get things done. We should create the internal switch, the router and to connect things in the proper way. But since this video is already too long, I'll break it here and I'll fulfill our plan in the next one. If you like my videos, please don't forget to support me by subscribing, liking, sharing, etc. Be cool and see you soon.